Hello and welcome to A Isma Chess. Today we will take a look at a very interesting game that is interesting in particular for beginners. We will look at a Pokemon. The white pieces and Daniel Negrano with the black pieces. Game one of their matchup in the Pog Champs 3. Bonanza is going on on Twitch. This huge, huge chess tournament. And the Pokemon and Negrano are both beginners, both novices. Pokemon has a very humble rating of only about 600, which is why I was extremely impressed with her play in this game. She opened up with pawn to D4. And Negrano, being a world-class poker player, answered with a bluff. He played E5. E5. If you look at this pawn on D4, you can see it's protected by the queen. This pawn, however, on E5, This is a gambit, and just a gambit is any opening where you offer up a pawn, you sacrifice a pawn, in order to gain a speedy development or get some tricks in. Some gambits are sound, like the Queen's Gambit, which I recommend that you play, and some are unsound. That, which I recommend that you do not play in Pokemon. Pokemon is about to show us why. I also actually did a video in my Learn Opening Tricks and Relax video. This is the last opening trick I teach you about. But I very much like what Pokemon did here. So number one, she captured the pawn. back and said okay I called your bluff what, you, what have you got and Negrano had prepared this he knew what he was doing he played knight to f6 this attacks the pawn and Pokemon said right but I can protect that pawn knight So f3 protects the pawn. And here he showed his hand with queen to e7, attacking the pawn again. The main line of this game bit continues with bishop to f4, protecting the knight, protecting the pawn here. And in playing that, you have to know what to do after queen b5, queen b4 check threatening to pick up the bishop and also attacking down here but Pokemon said I don't need to go for the main line you have already prematurely developed your queen and ASMA chess says that one shouldn't put out the queen too early and let me clarify I am not the coach of Pokemon but I think she's been coached by uh, some very strong players and she has undoubtedly heard that this is a bad idea she just very calmly played knight to c3 because when Negrano went in greedily and captured the pawn 
with knight takes e5. She could play knight to d5. And this is just brilliant. This is just exactly how you do this. This knight, you can see it looks at the queen, but it also looks at c7, where it could come in with our fork, attacking the king, checking the king, and threatening the rook. So, good capture, and then eat the rook. And believe it or not, the best course of action for Negrano here would probably be to play knight, captures knight on f3 with a check, and when it is recaptured, then retreat with his queen. Just retreat, and just accept that it went wrong, and that he has a bad position, but he, he has moves from there. He tried to hang on, he tried to remain the aggressor, so he played queen, to d6. This defends the knight while also defending c7. And Pokimane is about to give us a master class in how to punish an unsound gambit and how to exploit and embarrass a prematurely developed queen. She played bishop to f4 like so it is worth mentioning that she could have chosen to capture with the knight first but she played bishop f4 notice how she is developing pieces while threatening the queen she has just three pieces developed here and Grano is in a, in a spot of pro trouble here. This is serious. This knight cannot move. It will hang the queen. It will have to be protected. What do we do? There's only one move. And uh, the Grano showed that he is... Uh, he knows a little bit about chess. He, f he found the only move that works here, which is f6. Pawn to f6, yeah. Pawn to f6 protects the knight. But uh, Pokimane was not done. She played like very impressive move here. e4, like so. And this just does a bunch of things, and it is so principled. Of course, it protects the knight. It takes space in the center. It opens up the bishop. But the subtle and very nice point is that it opens up the diagonal for the queen to potentially come to h5 to check. That's not ELO 600. That's not your typical ELO 600, huh? Very impressive. And here Negrano said, okay, I have to deal with this situation. This is too much. What can I do? Well, I can try to play C6 and kick the knight. You know, if I get rid of this knight, maybe I can trade the queens, maybe... Maybe I can sort of put an end to Pokemon's attack. No, 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 no. And and here Pokemon just blew my mind because like she's supposed to be this novice that knows nothing of chess. And here she just found the correct solution to this whole thing going on here. Look how many pieces we have involved in this center here. 
So, would you believe me if I told you that this sequence of moves that Pokemon, Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon is about to play will clear the center completely, leaving only this bishop. That means that the queens will go, the knights will go, all of the knights. And this bishop will end up capturing this rook on h8. Can you believe that? That's exactly what happened. And it is the correct continuation to capitalize on the opening advantage that Pokemon Pokemon has obtained from punishing and calling Negrano's bluff. First of all, she captures the knight on e5, the knight captures knight, the knight in the back. Well, that knight was defended by the pawn on f6, so Negrano played, pawn takes knight on e5. But here comes the check from the queen. queen h5 checking the king and you can't really move this king because if you just move the king then the bishop will capture on e5 this will attack the queen and if you move the queen then the bishop can come to c7 and if bishop comes to c7 it would check the king that would be on d8 and unless black found something really clever that would actually be checkmate so it's only one thing to do it is to play g6 this blocks the check and also forces the queen to move the queen is no problem it just captures on e5 takes on e5 this is check. So in order to not give his queen away for free, De Grano changed ex traded queens. Queen takes queen. Bishop takes queen. And bishop on e5 is threatening the rook. Remember I told you about that? can't really do anything about that so pawn on c takes knight on e5 and pokemon answers bishop captures rook on h8 and let's take stock of the situation here Or maybe let's wait and allow Negrano to play his last capture to relieve the last bit of tension on this board. He played D takes E, like so. And now it's time to take a deep breath. and evaluate the position. First, we cancel out. We cancel out the material. So, that's if you don't know this technique, it is very valuable. It is way faster than counting the material. Just cancel it out. We have three pawns here. We can cancel them out with these three pawns. Then we have three pawns here king side we cancel them out with these pawns then we have a bishop we cancel that out with this bishop we have a bishop we cancel that out with this bishop we have a rook we cancel that out with this rook and then we have a rook for a knight that means material is completely even except that pokemane is up an exchange 
that is a significant advantage quite significant also we can look at the pawn structure so we can see that white has two islands of connected pawns while black has three islands of connected pawns it looks like these two pawns are far apart but if we play e5 they will protect each other and they will be connected it is better to have fewer pawn islands so in addition to pokimane having won the exchange she is also she also has a stronger pawn structure so after all the tension has been relieved and the smoke has cleared and the dust has settled on the chessboard we can see that pokimane has played an almost perfect perfect game just punished Negrano and she has emerged with a far superior position here and here it's interesting to take stock and look at this board now that all the, the tension has been released it's almost as if the game has to start again we had all this stuff going on with the tension the attacks the checks the fight for the center and now you have to come up with a whole new plan and it's like the opening has to start all over again and from this point on Pokimane starts to show what I think is her greatest weakness and that is if she is not attacking she is unsure about what to do so let's take a look at how Negrano can try to claw his way back into this game first Pokimane plays a very sensible move she castles long, castles to the queen side. This is a very good move. It develops the rook on a very active diagonal and also gets the king out of harm's way. Not that it is in any high risk of being subject to any tremendous attack but it is a it's a very nice positional positional move by Pokemon and Negrano tries to get aggressive again he started out with the aggressive game bit got it punished and now he tries again Bishop to c5 this is a very sensible developing move and it attacks the pawn on f2 and Pokimane she finds the correct move again here she, uh, she plays f3 she's not going to passively defend this pawn she's going to aggressively counter attack the pawn on e4 when I was watching this live I thought that maybe Negrano could play e3 and have a protected passed pawn but after looking at the game uh, during oh yeah, well, I looked at it like five six seven times today looked it over and it it turns out that in all variations uh, it is not really possible for black to hold on to this pawn because we can interpose we can make a long backwards move with this bishop and disconnect 
the protecting bishop from the pawn and then we can go and pick the pawn up so when Iguanu plays the correct move he captures captures an f3 g takes f3 is the logical answer from Pokimane so far so good he's still playing very well here Nigrano looks at this he thinks this could be a target the pawn on f3 so he plays b6 in order to get the bishop out via the long diagonal and Pokimane plays bishop to c4 now during this entire game Pokemon Pokimane has played well kind of flawless like all these moves have been just very very good she just saw that the the bluff that Nigrano was trying in the opening it was it was not sound and she just punished it she went for the critical lines she played the correct tactical moves and it was just a pleasure to to watch like the exquisite precision of her play and it was also very impressive now this last move bishop to c4 it's a very good move it attacks the, the knight down here g8 it develops a last piece now the rooks are connected but Nigrano plays bishop to b7 attacking this pawn down here and at this point something strange something rather strange happened because you'll notice that he didn't protect this knight he didn't do anything about the fact that this knight can just be captured and I think that Pokimane made the mistake here of trusting her opponent a little bit too much she probably saw okay the bishop can come down here capture the pawn on f3 this will fork both of my rooks maybe that will be dangerous maybe Pogi thought I should deal with the pressure first and so played rook to f1 rook on h to f1 protecting the pawn and this is a fine move and she keeps her advantage but she could also just have ended the game right there and then the the fork on the rooks doesn't really work rooks can move out of the way with a check the king would have to move you could move the other rook and the crown wouldn't get a single rook and he would lose a knight at this point the crown realized that he had to do something about this knight and that it would probably also be very nice to develop this rook so he castled queenside like so the knight is now defended yeah. pokemon pokemane captured the knight anyways bishop takes knight G8. And rook recaptures, rook captures bishop on g8. Now, normally I would be quite critical of a move like this because she exchanged a very active piece for an inactive piece um, and it is not 
one of the strongest move in the position moves in the position it, it isn't but I'm not going to criticize this move uh, because if we aim this video at beginners and newcomers to the game then we can praise this move for adhering to a very important chess principle which is that when you are ahead in material as Pokimane uh, is at this point it is a good idea to trade down because your proportional advantage will then grow or your relevant relative advantage will then grow and so even though this was not super accurate it was uh, it showed that she had a strategy and a plan uh, that is that was in accordance with sound chess principles and she kept her advantage with this move so after rook captures the bishop is threatened she goes all the way back and it is uh, really from this point on that it's very interesting from a psychological perspective because all the moves that Pokimane made over on Negrano's side of the board on the black side of the board they were all very accurate and way 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 above her level like and way above Negrano's level by the way also he was being completely outclassed here but now if you look now all her pieces are on the first three ranks and I'm going to maybe get in hot water here a little bit because I am I'm going to say th something about gender don't please don't get triggered it's not going to be a political discussion or anything like that it's just something I noticed and for all the women and girls watching I think I have a very good piece of advice for you um, there is a chess legend she is called Judith Polgar she is far and above the best female player that has ever played the game without any any doubt uh, she beat Gary Kasparov who to my mind is the best player of all time um, she qualified for the candidate tournament for the world championship and she was well I think we can just use Kasparov's words um, in describing her about how awesome she was he said that if to play like a girl to play like a girl means anything in chess it means to play with relentless aggression because Judith was just a tornado on the chessboard like and she still is but she doesn't play that competitively anymore um, she would just make these precise precise accurate attacking moves very aggressive and she would just destroy her opponents and I think that she's a very good role model I think that I've seen uh, luckily with the Queen's Gambit a lot of girls and women picking up chess and I've seen a little bit of a pattern seen that many girls and women hashtag not all hashtag please don't make this into a political discussion this is just something I noticed many girls and women um, sometimes play as if they don't deserve to win the game sometimes they get defensive or they trust their opponent way too much 
and if we if we look at what Pokimane has been doing in this game, she's just been crushing Ligrano, just destroying him, playing far superior chess to what he was doing. But now it is as if um, she has run out of attacking ideas and got it into her head that she has to defend and the quality of her moves just deteriorates quite rapidly and I think that and I think this is true for everybody watching but I think maybe especially girls and women that more important than practicing openings and practicing tactics all of that I think the best advice I can give is you deserve to win the game do not let yourself be intimidated you are awesome go look for the critical lines go look for the attacking ideas don't think that you should just shuffle your pieces around. Go for the jocular. I'm not saying you will win every game like that, of course not. But I'm saying that that, that is how you improve. Just try to play the best chess you possibly can. Believe in it. Believe in yourself. Negrano. Play the sensible move here. Rook to c8, double attacking the pawn on f3 with the bishop and the rook. And maybe you can even make a metaphor that if you become too self conscious, then you only think about you, your own bubble, and you don't keep your eyes. I think it's what's kind of happening to Pokimane here. She played King B1. Not a bad move, not at all. But it 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 doesn't do that much. It's like she is timid. All of a sudden she's timid after just playing all this fantastic attacking chess. Nigrano captures the pawn here. Bishop takes pawn on f3. And maybe you can see why this is a mistake. If Pokimane had looked at this position and said, all right, how do I destroy my opponent? Then I am sure she would have found the correct move because when she looked at the position earlier in the game and asked herself the same question, how do I destroy my she found way trickier moves than what she's what what she needs to play here. Now here just just a simple move, rook to e3, attacks the bishop, it will be attacked twice. It can't be defended, so it'll have to move, and then you can capture the rook with your own rook. You can just go rook takes rook. It will be recaptured by the bishop, but it will be a very beneficial trade for you. Instead, Pokey played rook to e2, d d2, excuse me, and also not rook to e3, rook to d3. Negrano attacked this rook, bishop to e3. Now here, just rook to d3 would have been very very good because it would attack this bishop the bishop wouldn't have anything anywhere to go really it could go back and we'd be protected but then we could just pick up this bishop here on, uh, on f3 so just rook to d3 actually wins the game And instead, Pokey got a little bit too fancy. She played uh, bishop b4, attacking this rook. And uh, 
don't get me wrong, this kind of works. She's not losing all of her advantage, but uh, just rook to d3 would have won the game, just capitalizing on her advantage, which is that this rook is better than this bishop. And that's her advantage, because if we cancel out rook for rook, bishop for bishop, then we have rook for bishop, and this rook is better. Show how it's better by going to rook to d3. But uh, bishop to b4 attacks this rook. Negrano played rook to f4, attacking this bishop right back. And now Pokey did play rook. So it's not, she's still in the game, she still has her advantage, but uh, Negrano gave her some, some, he, he made some mistakes, she could have capitalized on them, and she didn't. Now this is a, this is really a cluster of pieces, and they're attacking each other in all kinds of ways. Negrano chose to play bishop to e2, attacking both rooks, forking the rooks. But this allows Pokey to play rook takes rook on f4. And then Negrano played bishop takes rook on f4. And I guess his whole point was that after this whole series of moves, he is attacking h2. He's attacking h2 with the bishop. But if you look at this, and I know I've been critical of Pokemon's play this these past couple of moves, past five moves, so... Um, but if you look at this position, she still is up the exchange. She still has the advantage. But here she made the crucial mistake. So she wants to protect this. It makes a lot of sense. And she played rook h3. It looks so natural protecting the pawn and also attacking was what she played and maybe we can talk a little bit about why that doesn't work when we get there but first I'd like to show the counterintuitive correct defensive idea the correct defensive idea is actually to just move the rook somewhere let's say we go Now how does that protect h2? It attacks the bishop, so doesn't it kind of just force the bishop to do what it wants to do anyway? Yes, it does. So let him do it. Bishop takes h2. And now we use the same idea that we've been talking about couple of times showing that the rook is better than the bishop. Now we just go rook to d2, d2 embarrassing the bishops because as you can see if you move one bishop we capture the other, if we move the other bishop we capture the first one. There's nothing, they, nothing to be done about that. So that is an indirect way of defending the pawn. And that would have been the way for Pokimane to win this game. game.
hooky main played rook to h3 and rook h3 makes a lot of sense here except that it doesn't work but it makes so much sense that you want to protect this pawn and attack this pawn why is it so important to protect this pawn well it's about Negrano's only plan to win this game it is to get rid of this pawn so he can get down with these two pawns and make a new queen that's the only way he's going to win this game Pokimane's plan it's way easier it's just to capitalize on the superiority of the rook and pick up more material and then she can have many ways to win the game but as long as she has the pawn on h2 these two pawns are not that dangerous because if they let so cycle down the board you can ch exchange one pawn for one pawn and it is quite easy to defend against a single pawn it is the pawn duo that is very hard to defend against and we can see how they work together already now with Negrano's move just h5 here and now this rook has some problems because soon he's going to attack the rook with the bishop and the rook will have to move and you can see how these two bishops can infiltrate and chase the rook away chasing the rook away so Pokemon played Rook C3 check King B7 and now A3 and this move doesn't do much but I'm not going to criticize it too much because uh, Pokemon was quite low on time at this point. So after a3, Negrano played. Bishop takes h2. And now the tables have turned. Because now material is even in a way, but these two pawns are connected. They can work together and it will be very hard to stop them making a new queen. Pokemon played h4. g5. a5. b takes a. Bishop takes a5. Yeah, important to to not allow the bishop come here on e8 and stop the pawns in their tracks. So Negrano played g4, getting them on white squares. Pokey tried rook b3 check, king a6. Now she went rook e3 attacking the bishop. King takes bishop on e5. Rook takes bishop on e2. And this also attacks the bishop on h2. And I think that maybe Pokey didn't realize just how hard it is to stop these two when you only have a rook. Because the rook is very powerful, but when it's alone, it's very hard for it to deal 
with multiple pieces that can work together. Now you can see Negrano just plays g3, this protects the bishop, and now there really isn't anything to do. It's funny because earlier Pokey played king b1 and now I believe that the king is exactly one square away from actually reaching these pawns and if you can get uh, the king over there together with the rook so the rook is not alone then you should be able to defend this maybe even win as it is now you're too far away king c1 And here Pogi played a nice trick, b4 check. The point is if the king takes, you can play um, rook e4 check and pick up this pawn. It's still, Negrano can still win, but just by going g2, you pick up the bishop and then you make a new queen. Uh, but he would have to find that over the board and he could mess that up. But he doesn't want anything to do with it just plays uh, king b5 here and now the rest of the game it's it's over like pokey plays rook g2 but negrano attacks it with h3 and she desperately gives up the rook Rook captures g3. Bishop takes rook. King d2. h2. King e3. And pawn queens. And Pokemon resigns. So uh, back up on the horse or the knight again for Pokey. I think it's clear that she has talent uh, for the game. And my my interpretation of her play is that she um, just she should just be more aggressive and believe more in herself because when she goes in defensive mode she doesn't look for the best moves she doesn't find the critical lines but when she is in attack mode she's in beast mode and i think um i think that's true for all of us in a way that we should approach the game as if we deserve to win it with all that said the crown won a fair game and he also won the uh, their second game of the match and it was kind of the same deal a pokey played very well out of the opening she had a winning position uh, at some point uh, but then she faltered um, I would say that Negrano's opening play was better in the game too uh, than in his first game with the England game but um, so I have sort of come into this game as if it was a grandmaster game uh, but uh, in all honesty both players really showed some quite fine chess and especially Pokey in the in the opening stage all the while she was on the attack she was playing extremely well so I uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed this little walk walk through of this game and I hope that I will see you in the